All right. What's the segment called, Gary? This is called The Doctor Chronicles. Returned, returned, but revamped. Return of the Mac. It's not just Gary talking shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually going to be beneficial for people. Useful stuff, guys. So basically, beneficial stuff that people need to know hmm. um, just about health because he has a USP and I feel like I should lean on it a little bit. I love that. He knows a little bit about something. He you knows know. a little bit about something. That's a really good, that's a really good tag for you. He knows a little bit about something. That's all, that's all doctors, isn't it, really? You know a little bit about something. I know a little bit about something. There we go. That's it. it. WebMD. He knows a little bit about WebMD. Anyway. I know how to read Wikipedia. What, and WebMD. More accurately. Yeah. That's basically it. All right. So give me the sketch. What's the rundown for this segment? So, as in you on the story. Yeah. Yes. So, guys, last week I was heading into town to collect some tailoring. What's town for those that aren't from Birmingham? Town, so Warsaw Town. Cha, see, you had to clarify that, Warsaw Town. I thought yeah. Birmingham Town. Oh, no, no, no. Well, you know, it's what one you of know, things. Londoners call Central, but I don't. Even though point. we do oh have a place God, there called... Warsaw Central. Even though we do have things called Grand Central, but yes. Yeah, Grand Central. Grand Central. Grand. So going into Warsaw Town Centre, uh -huh. uh, which, you know, is pretty run down, to be honest, but if you can avoid going to Birmingham and you have places and people you know you take it you take it like you know build relationships with quite a few people there so i can still get a lot of things done one of these things is, is my tailor so my yep. tailor is a really really cool guy he's a guy called lee he runs peacock tailoring shout out to him does great great work if you want a recommendation he's the guy to go to yeah uh, fast work always excellent work so with shindy i'm driving in the car to get the clothes as we're approaching the bit where we're going to park the car, which is close to it, we see a man lying on the floor. When I say on the floor, in the middle of the road, look like looks like he spark out. Were you driving? So, yeah, I was driving. So you remember? Do you remember the games? Uh, that wrestling game we used to play, SmackDown was it called SmackDown. Yeah, yeah. Right, you remember SmackDown once you did the finisher and somebody's KO, lying flat, just spread out, and arms you can and just legs. pin him, and you know it's a one, two, three win. Exactly, exactly. And instead of like the breathing, the this is just. You're going to yeah, get the three, right? Yeah, yeah. He's like that. Oh, God. Okay. He is KO, man. Someone so, laid the SmackDown on him, clearly. Someone laid the SmackDown on his dude. <laughs> so I'm driving there, and obviously I don't want to run him over. So I have to go past him to pull up to park where I'm going to park anyway. So I go really slowly so as not to run him over. And I can see that other people are starting to come as well. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm actually, I am going to work later this day as well. Obviously, I don't carry medical equipment with me. Um, got, just got you know basic stuff. I don't, I don't think even had my steth that day. It was at yeah. home. Steth is stethoscope. Steth is stethoscope. I know a little right. bit about everything too. Good anyway. man. Um, but I've got some people there. So if somebody's on the phone. I presume they're ringing for an ambulance. You've got a resident coming out. You've got the security man coming. There's, there's stuff happening, right? I'm just thinking. Should I do the teaching part now? I'll do the teaching part now. Yeah. yeah go on. So when you find someone like that, the first thing you need to identify is are they breathing? It's really that simple. Okay. How'd you check that? I'll tell you that in a second. So what I'm going to share with you now, guys, is an approach what we call BLS, mm -hmm. basic life support. Mm -hmm. In hospitals, we use ILS, intermediate, and ALS, advanced life support, because obviously we have all the gear, right? And we have everything we can do, ventilators, X, Y, Z. But obviously when you're out on the street, the most amount of kit you're going to get pre-ambulance is going to be a defib. Yeah. If you've got one. Okay. So defib, guys, the AED, automatic uh, electric defibrillator. Yeah. Okay. So checking for breathing. So essentially what you do is, and they always teach you, first thing to do actually before you help anybody is check for signs of danger. Is your life going to be at risk? So like a really extreme example being in a war zone, for example. Oh, okay. Like, got so it. like yeah, someone's yeah. shooting at you. Yeah, yeah. You might want to help somebody, but you are you going to be... That. Yeah, you're going to be harmed because of that. Yeah. So check for danger, signs of danger, other cars. So I had Shindy doing traffic control. So she put the hazards on. Our Seriously? Car. Yeah, yeah. She was there like directing traffic so that Smart she could man. go down one side. I had another guy who said, right, what I want you to do is start your watch. Yeah. Or make make a note of the time. So whenever these, because at this point, I still don't know what's happening. But whenever something like this happens, always in hospital as well, you always need to know the downtime. Yeah. All right. So you only know that if you know the start time or start stopwatch so mm -hmm. it's you start the time you get up on the ambulance when it's ready give me the phone with some loudspeaker you go and find some water yeah, yeah. so i gave everyone basic jobs all right so you have to so i assume the the role of a leader so when we have a cardiac arrest that's when somebody dies in hospital heart stops when we have a, what we call the arrest team the team that will turn up yeah it designated the you know we have an emergency crash bleep that we carry for this it covers everything anywhere in the hospital yeah, yeah so when you get there there's a designated team leader 
So he leads while the other people are trying to put the needles in and doing the airway and what whatever. Got it, yeah. So I had to kind of do all of these roles, sort of, right? So the first thing you do is you look for signs of breathing. Is the chest moving? That's the first sign you look for. You yeah. don't do the... It's not actually the pulse. No, no. And if you're not sure if the chest is moving, but because you can still be breathing, you actually... Very put shallow. Your, yeah, you put your ear to the mouth and you're feeling for what well, you're listening or feeling or you're just for 10 seconds. to feel like a little bit of air in your yeah, ears. 10 seconds. If after 10 seconds, there are no signs of breath, so we call that respiratory arrest, yeah. okay? irrespective of the pulse or no pulse, you start compressions. That's yeah. why you start there. Okay. Okay. If you're starting compressions on somebody, we're doing a ratio of 30 to two. So 30 chest compressions. So you're going to go with this kind of position. You're going to go. So you've got your sternum, which is the breastbone here. You go to the base of that, what we call the ziffy sternum, so the solar plexus. It'd be really beneficial if you watch this on video. That's Absolutely. a shout out to YouTube and to Spotify <laughs> video. So have a look. If not, I'll do my best to describe. Basically, Grant's pointing towards his chest. So chest, breastbone, solar plexus, the bit where you get winded. Yeah. And you want to have this thing straight armed and you want to go for compression across all three things no 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 i'm just i'm just saying you you count down as you get down to there so you want to get, get to, to the bit where your abdominals kind of finish start abdominals start sorry yeah so yeah, i'm yeah, talking yeah. about That's, yeah sorry i'm thinking the wrong way around yeah. okay yeah so yeah. where your abdominals start you want to press there absolutely not on the heart you want to press like there just there the heart is behind there Oh, is it? I thought the heart's like... Yeah. No, it's a misconception. Everyone thinks the heart's on the left and all this. Isn't bits. it? No, no, the heart's in the middle of the body. So why does it always feel like it's on the left? No, it just um, doesn't does feel like that, does it? It does, you know. It's because, it. yeah, the, one of the... So when you feel for your pulse, the strongest <laughs> beat, yeah. like I'm feeling for it now. So in a man, your left-hand side, just under your, your nipple, we call that the apex, that's the strongest point generally for a heartbeat. Yeah. That's why we think it's there. But the heart is in the middle. Oh, man. So compression. Lance knee today, all right. 30 to 2 ratio, 2 rescue breaths. That's 30 to 2? 30 compressions, 2 rescue breaths, mouth to mouth. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right, you're trying to give the body the impetus to essentially what breathe. What if their breath is like horrible? Yeah, you, you, either, you either do it, you don't do it. It's one of the things you got to commit. Now, when we're in hospital, we have, a, we have a mask which you can put on and then breathe. So the other side is like a mouthpiece and then yeah. the other bit sits on the person. So you're not actually going lip to lip. Um, How was that during COVID? I was thinking they definitely invented that during COVID, didn't it? No, no, it's an old thing. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh. That's been going on for time. And then you start CPR. Now, in that time, if you've got access to defib pads, the AED, you put them on and then you follow what it says. So no one's going to have them on the street though, isn't it? Well, there's businesses close by. You reckon uh, businesses have it cash, like sitting there waiting? Yeah, some, some should do. Some it's a requirement. I don't think any businesses here need it. I mean, it, we didn't need it anyway. Yeah. Had we needed it, then I would have asked, you know, for a runner to see, look at the businesses, yeah, yeah. see if you've got it, obviously on the phone to ambulance. And then you just listen. Here's a key thing. Once you put the crash pads on, you know, and on the diagram, it shows you where to put the position of the crash pads. Hang on. Why would you put the crash pads on now? This is if you've done the 32, 32. That can, that's continuous. And there's no response. No, no, no. You keep Oh, doing so that. that carries on. Yeah, yeah. You, good you, clarification. Good okay, clarification. Yeah. You still put them on. So once you, and you follow the diagram, crash pads, so one here, one here. Essentially what you're trying to do is when you deliver the shock, it's across. The heart needs to be in between. Yeah. Okay. Follow the diagram. Oh, so it pushes the... Pushes the shock into your chest. Yeah, through into the heart. Into your chest. It has to go through the heart. You're obviously trying to shock the heart. That's the whole point. Of yeah, the yeah. Heart. But obviously, if you, it makes sense if you're doing left side, right side, because the heart's in the center. So you're Correct. shocking on both sides to get it going. Great. Yeah, it's not. It's not. You really. You put one on the side and you put one sort of there. Oh, I kind of like my shame. theory better. But okay. Yeah, but yeah. I understand what you're saying. <laughs> but like this, on the box, there'll be a diagram. You, you yeah, follow yeah. the position. Then you follow the machine. It'll either say shock advised, so you charge, you get everyone back, and you deliver a shock, or it's yeah. going to say continue CPR. Yeah. So here's where it gets a little bit technical. So in films, they show this wrong all the time. In a film, they'll show you that you can, you know, the, the old American style where you do shock, shock. Yeah. You can shock anything. Yeah. In real life, you can't. There are what we call shockable rhythms. So if the heart is in a certain dangerous rhythm that is amenable to a shock, you can shock it. And then the other side, you have what we call the unshockable rhythms. You can't shock. Which so is for, that? So for example, again, in films, completely wrong. When you have a flat line. Yeah. Beep, when the yeah. person's yeah. dead, we call that asystole. The heart has stopped. You're completely dead. That is cardiac arrest. Yeah. That is not a shockable rhythm. You cannot deliver a shock to a heart that's completely stopped. Can't you? No. Oh, Again, misconception. Mad. Right? Misconception. Now, this will blow your mind. I teach this to medical students. I think you already have. Man. <laughs> I teach this to medical students all the time and they're just like, what? So I'll ask you the question. I'm going to ask the viewers the question. What is the point of CPR? Why do you do CPR? Pause. Comment. Don't look Tell up. us, please. Yeah. What's the reason for CPR? And then check your answer in three, two, one okay go 
No, no, I'm asking you. Oh, again. shit, my answer. Yeah. Um, what's the point of CPR? Why do you do CPR? To resurrect someone. As in, what are you... Okay, what are you trying to do to the heart? Restart it. Get it going again. Yeah, that's actually the right answer. Oh, yes. So I went to too many medic sessions, so, baby. Yeah, so most... Yeah, yeah I have to it there, actually. Most people get that wrong because what they think is this thing that's taught is, well, the heart has stopped. The function of the heart is to pump blood around the body. By compressing it, you're manually pushing some of that blood to the brain and Clearly to the you parts. can't. You do to a degree. Because remember, again, this is downtime. The problem with downtime, or what we worry about is lack of oxygen to the brain long long enough. It means you means have you a stroke. stroke. Exactly. So then you become, you know, you can become a vegetable. It can be lots of things that can happen from that. We're trying to minimize the time between death, cardiac arrest, and what we call ROSC. ROSC is an acronym for return of spontaneous circulation, i.e. your heart's yeah. pumping again. Yeah, yeah. So we always say time to ROSC. Okay. That's, that's the term we use, right? The point of CPR is to remember because when you're doing it, you're doing it because somebody's in an unshockable rhythm. Yeah, I'm trying to get them from an unshockable rhythm mm-hmm. to a shockable rhythm. Right, that's the point of CPR because if I can shock them, the chance of that ROSC, i.e., the heart coming back to normal, is much higher. Mm-hmm. That's the reason you do CPR. Real, real life example. So Raj, who you, we both know. Yeah, yeah. We did he CPR did. on him. Yeah. Ambulance crew arrived. He was then in a shockable rhythm, which meant he could then be shocked. Right, so because you kept blood going the around CPR. the body well, through yeah, CPR, CPR yeah. as much as you could, when Correct. they shocked, it was then able to have an impact. Correct. If because you it, didn't do that... If they got there and put the pads on... on they rash, would have had to have done CPR first and then do or that. Or continued, exactly. And then it's increasing that downtime. Yeah, so you probably have a larger window for potential failure. Absolutely. I mean, look, the, successful, the, the, the rate of successful ROSC in a healthy 21-year-old outside of hospital... Maybe, no, inside hospital is still only 20%. Still low, man. Yeah, yeah. No, again, things you see in films and what you think is, oh, yeah, every, everyone who gets CPR is going to come back to life. <laughs> They're all good. Everyone we shot comes back. No, no, man. Yeah. It's really low. And that's Why do you think they do that for a dramatic effect? I have no idea, man. It just looks cool on screen. Well, seeing uh, the body go, boom. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, that, don't forget the slow-mo. Oh, man, you know what someone told me once? This is a bit dark. But, um... So we had some guys come over from uh, Pakistan, some doctors, and they were saying how like they're working and they're like, oh, your equipment's amazing. And I was like, oh, you know, what do you mean? He goes, oh, sometimes like, he goes, there was once a patient and they had the crash pads on, but the battery had died. And the, and in Pakistan, like the family like watches when you're resuscitating. Like in the UK, be like, sorry, can't go beyond this point. We need to carry yeah, on. We'll come speak to you, right? He was like, they just watch. They're like, you can't stop them type of thing. And he goes, one time we wanted to deliver the shock but there's no battery. So they just like push the patient a little bit. They shook the patient to make it look like. Oh my limp. God. Yeah. And I was just like, Oh, like, this is unreal, man. I was like, this is, like, you just, I couldn't oh, even comprehend what you're saying. Oh, fuck me. That's yeah. so scary. Imagine, yeah, yeah. imagine that level of fraudulent activity doing that in front of someone. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I mean, look, there's obviously that side, the unethical side there. And That's it was, fully unethical. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it wasn't, it wasn't him. It wasn't this person directly. It was just, you know, something he'd seen. Yeah. Yeah. But still, but then there's the other side. It's like, oh my god, you don't have the equipment. Like that's, you can't deliver healthcare without equipment. Yeah. And then I remember somebody, and this, I don't, I don't remember which country this was, but he was like, you know, some people really have no idea and are very gullible. And they once got told they they put the patient in an elevator from the first floor to the third floor, and the patient told going up in the elevator was a CT scan. That's what they were told. <laughs> the movement of the elevator was the scan was that to and make then, sure was that because the patient had kicked up so much of a fuss they wanted to scan no, no 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 i don't know what it is and basically they're scamming them and they still charge them oh my they're God. like yeah yeah you've had your scan done and all they did was stuck in the elevator and i was like and i just showed them a generic scan saying are they yeah yeah it's fine Here Here everything's fine have a look at this everything's completely kosher. Tip top, right uh so yeah no, that was pretty anyway i digress this dude was breathing Okay. okay, so you administered CPR, so you didn't need to administer CPR. Absolutely. So then so you put him in recovery. That's the next thing to do. So yes, I would put him in recovery, but I did a quick, quick what we call A to E assessment. A to E being the, the valves, oh, sorry, not the valves. So A is airway. Is the airway clear? Mm-hmm. This is the order of priority. Okay, so if somebody's choking or you know, clear the obstructed airway. airway, you have to clear the airway first, yeah. which is why you put the head back. I'm going to come away from the mic now, but you put the head back. And you do a jaw thrust and a chin lift. What you're trying to do is, if the tongue is obstructing the airway, you're trying to move out of the way so there's a clear airway. That's yeah. all I can do in terms of without equipment. Yeah. B is breathing. Okay. So that's the second one. So airway clear. Is, are the, is the patient breathing? Is the chest moving? Yeah. If I've got a stethoscope, I'm listening for breath sounds. Yeah. Okay. C, circulation. 
is your central pulse. So you can look at a peripheral pulse, which is your radial pulse. Yeah. And obviously you've got your carotid in your neck now. Yeah. Kind of these are kind of um, rules of thumb. If you've got a peripheral pulse, mm -hmm. uh, a radial pulse, your blood pressure, your top number your systolic is at least 90. Okay. Okay. If you've got a central pulse, it's at least 60. So again, if you're out in the field, this is like what we call pre, um, pre-clinical medicine, mm -hmm. um, and you haven't got access to a blood pressure machine, this is how you're working it out. So if your neck is 60 and your wrist is 90. Yeah, so if you haven't got a wrist one, but you've got a central one, then you're like, oh That shit. means you're really low. Yeah, but, but exactly, yeah. So you could be bleeding so out, it could be septic. Which is more important, the top number or number beneath? In this scenario, when somebody... It, it's, the, it's potentially it's, it's a top number. CPR, top number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. top number being neck. No, no, when I say top number, I just mean when you take a blood pressure, you get two numbers. Yeah, yeah, but obviously in the field, in which the field, one are you more Yeah, no, no, you, it's only of the top number you're feeling. You never, you never feel the bottom number. Oh, okay, fine. So even the neck and... So yeah, yeah, theoretically, yeah, yeah. the neck and the wrist should be given the same pulse rate. Yeah, yeah, the pulse rate might be the same, but it's, can you get it? Yeah, yeah, there will be. If I take your pulse here, yeah. I take it there, the number should be the same. Oh, okay, right. What, I I, what that, I'm okay, saying yeah. is that if I can't feel a pulse here, yeah. but I can feel a pulse there, yeah. then I know it's at least 60, because if, if it was here, it would be at least 90. So you're much more unwell. But if I can feel your radial pulse, but pressure at least 90, I'm much happier. You're okay. Yeah, got it. Yeah? Okay, okay, yeah. That's what so I'm So one is more responsive than the other. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's a bigger artery here. It's closer to your brain. Right, it's so a bigger artery in your neck, neck. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Look, if you haven't got what we call a central pulse, you're dead anyway. Your heart's yeah, stopped. Done. Right. Yeah. So, and that's one of the ways when we verify death in a hospital, we have to do the five checks on somebody to actually say so that's they're dead. A, B, that was C. That was C. And then D is what we call disability. Yeah. So within D, it's, it's various things. But the main thing being if you're diabetic, are you having a hypo? Yeah. Is your blood sugar low? Yeah. We have this thing uh, which is DEFG. Don't ever forget blood glucose. Or don't ever forget the glucose. That's an extra yeah, acronym. Like that, yeah. And then E is everything else. So <laughs> ideally, That's a nice little umbrella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ideally, what you're doing is now looking in hospitals, we get a medical scissors. We want to make sure have you broken anything? Is there a bone sticking out? Are you bleeding anywhere? Is yeah. there a rash? Yeah. Is there a hole? Yeah. Everything else. So you're doing what we call a survey, mm. a primary and secondary survey. So you're looking to see is there anything else going For on? For a random person on the street, they ain't going to know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. So Again, all look, they're going to know is just Basic like, life support. No breathing, start CPR. Yeah. Breathing, recovery position, call for help. What's the recovery position? Right. So the recovery position is when you put somebody in what we call the left lateral position. Okay. So on their left ear. On their left, right. And you put the... So the right hand will go under their... Left. Under their left, left, left ear. Yeah. And then you get the right leg over. So the knee is up towards the chest where the left leg is extended. Essentially... So the, you pull the, your right leg up, left knee down. Yeah, left leg is straight, but the right knee is towards the chest, but it's you're all on the left-hand side. Right, and why are you doing that? So this recovery position is all about, if somebody, again, one of the risks is if they vomit, then the vomit could go in the wrong pipe, i.e. the windpipe, the trachea, go into your lungs, cause pneumonia, you might choke on it as well. So if they're going to vomit in that position, you're much more likely for the vomit to go and not obstruct your airway. Why is it left side, not right side? So that's a bit more technical. That's more to do with your actual airways themselves. Right. So the airways are not... So when, when your windpipe comes down and it splits into two, yeah. we call that bifurcation, yeah. it's not exactly the same angle. Okay. So by putting them in this position, if they are going to aspirate, I, it goes down the, the wrong pipe. It's harder for them to aspirate when they're on that side. Oh, okay, okay. So it does make a difference. Okay. It does make a difference, yes. Um, so we put this guy in the recovery position. Yeah, that's what we did. He was talking though. So they've got the ambulance on the, on the crew. And whenever you're speaking to an ambulance crew, you know, they're going to ask you, is he breathing? That's the first question they'll ask as well. Mm. Obviously, I'm medically trained. So I did what we call a... Um, a full breakdown assessment. Yes. Um, it's, oh, S-bar. That's it. S-bar is the way medically professionals hand over to each other. Yeah. To, so relaying information. So you did that same. you like, this is what's happened. Bam, 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 Situation, bam, bam. background, assessment, re review, response, yeah. or recommendation. That's what the R is. Um my conclusion was, so this guy had a, like a bag with him, which looked like he had alcohol in there. Mm. He's a youngish guy. He's in his mid-30s. Mm. His pupils are very constricted. So pupil constriction, you normally get with an opiate overdose, like morphine. Yeah. Right? So I asked him what medicines you want. He said, I'm on codeine, cocodamol. So I, my, when, I, when I tested his eyes, I shone light into his eyes. You're expecting a pupil response. You use response. iPhone for that? I use my iPhone for that. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. Got to Shout use what out you to Apple. Yeah, yeah, it works. <laughs> And, uh, you know, his pupils were very, very small. That could be normal for him. I don't know this gentleman. Yeah. Um, but I was like, okay, there's, that's one. Number two, he's got a big sweat patch on his back. So when you take um, uppers, so certain drugs like uh, amphetamine, speed, things that like that. They make you just go bam. They make you sweat a lot. Right, MDNA, that's the other one. Um, 
so I'm like, okay, is he? It wasn't particularly hot day, so is he sweating because his heart rate is really fast? He's tachycardic. Yeah. We did take his pulse; it's about eighty. A guy had a blood pressure machine, came and did it, it was like one twenty. So numbers wise, he was okay. He just looked like he was pissed essentially. So he's drunk plus or minus taking an overdose or something. But he spark out, put him in the recovery position. Spoke to the ambulance, said, look, he needs an assessment, but it's not a cardiac arrest. So Sanjo always tells us, you know, the categories. Cat, yeah, yeah, cat the categories of importance. So cat one is the most important. I don't think there's a cat zero. I don't think, don't think so. But cat one is, you know. Yeah, you so don't. is this like category? This is like a four or five. Four, okay. Yeah, four or five. He needs assessment. Um, and they were like, okay, you, we'll send somebody. But there's obviously a wait. So I'm there waiting with this gentleman. He then decides that he wants to take a piss. So he gets up to us, help him yeah. up. We asked this close by business, can we use your bathroom to get everything ready? We turn around, he's pissing in the corner. <laughs> As you do. When you need to go, you need to go, mate. But again... And then the other thing I forgot to mention, when I do the, the, the ABCD, as part of D, we do something to assess somebody's neurological status. Yeah. So the quick version of that is what we call an AVPU. Alert, verbal response only, response to pain, unresponsive. So alert is you speaking to me now. Yeah. Verbal will be like, Indy, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you, verbal. Indy, can you hear me? You say nothing, but I start pinching you or doing what we call a sternal rub and you go, ah. So you're responding to pain, that's a P. Mm-hmm. You is unresponsive. Mm-hmm. So that's a quick version of doing it. There's a more formal version, which is called the GCS. Yeah. Okay? So that stands for Glasma Coma Scale. It's a score out of 15. You right now are 15 out of 15. Yeah. The lowest you can be is a three, which is you score, there's three sections and you score one, one, one. Right. Which gives you a score of three. His GCS was fine. He's speaking to me. He's following commands. He's moving all his limbs independently. I'm did he go in the ambulance in the end? No, no. Oh, here's the next part. So he did a piss and then he ran off. So then... What a fucking waste. <laughs> so he had a pair of glasses, which he left there. So I ran after him. ran like half a road yeah. just to... Be, Mate, here's your glasses. He lived close by, he said. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, look, you should be assessed medically. But he had capacity. I couldn't pin him down. Mm. Then I had to bring the ambulance to de-escalate and say, look, we don't need the ambulance. And um, that was it. And I carried on to uh, collect my tailoring. All One a day's day. work. All a day's work, mate. And then I went One to work day. afterwards. And you went to work to do the real thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, People uh, that need it. So you never know, right? So just guys have a you know like a base level of knowledge. Um, yeah. Always in these situations, don't try and be a hero. So in, yeah, exactly. I was going to say in summary, in summary, don't try and be a fucking hero. Yeah. If you don't know, call for help. Call for help, Escalate but then quickly. put them yeah. straight in the recovery position, like as a minimum. Is that a minimum you should do? Yeah. If and if they're not breathing, start CPR. Yeah, if yeah. You, yeah. If, you're starting if you don't CPR, even know, so if you're not comfortable giving CPR, yeah. Then well, you've got to do like the turnover. You can do it. It's not going to do anything. Then you CPR. But yes, the other thing is if you're going to commence CPR, remember you're going to get tired at some point. So professionally, obviously in hospitals, we have like your first change, second change, third change. Like we have a system. You ready? Need a break? Right. You jump on. So there should be minimal time. How hard do you do it? You do it hard. So if you're doing CPR properly, you should be breaking a rib. Breaking Stern. a rib? Sternum. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, man. You guys yeah, yeah. are brutal. No, no, but that, this is the thing. And when I have discussions with people, so you'll know, Indy, that in hospitals, look, we have an aging population, right? Yeah. There are some very, very frail people coming to hospital. Now, the default is that everybody gets CPR. Sometimes they ask you, you don't want to do the resuscitation because exactly. it's be too painful. Exactly. Yeah, well, yeah, so it's, it's more to do, I mean, when we put that slant on it, we think somebody's too frail and we think the outcome, that even if we got ROSC, remember, return of spontaneous yeah. circulation, i.e. you're alive, is your quality of life, of life going to be... Exactly. Are you now a vegetable? Are you now going to never leave the bed? So this is what they told. I think they agreed this with my grandma when she was on end of life. I think. They I might been. be making this up or I might be getting this mixed up with medics. I don't know. No, she was palliative at the end. You yeah, told yeah. me because she had the, the pain medicines yeah, and, the, yeah. and she was on everything. Comfortable. Yeah, yeah. And they were like, we're not going to resuscitate. So that's I called think the, there was a DNR. I that's think. it. A DNA I, CPR. That's the, is the it D- DNR? DNAR is the short and then the DNA CPR is the full. Yeah. Do not attempt resuscitation. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, in medics, you would have seen us teaching students. Yeah, yeah, I have, I have. Hence why I'm not sure if I'm mixing up a memory here. I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, I can't remember where we spoke. Don't be a hero. Don't Minimum be a hero. Minimum CPR administration. Yeah, sorry. So when you're doing CPR, if you're out on the street, then identify, guys, is anybody else CPR trained? Yeah. If you're happy to do CPR, then, you know, so you know that you're the first change, second change. Um, do what you can do. Because one thing that always has stuck with me, which has helped me, is look, when somebody is dead, Anything that you do is a bonus. They're already they're already at zero. Okay, so don't, don't. Oh, so if they're dead in front of you, anything you do on top is just bringing them back. Well, as in the attempt, the, the attempt is that, but I'm saying they can't get any worse. 
Well, yeah, the reason why you say that is because yeah. sometimes it's obviously a very stressful thing to deal with. Yeah, it's a big uh, um, responsibility. When somebody is unwell but they're still awake and alive, yeah, it's stressful, right? Yeah. When somebody is dead, it becomes a whole level, different level of stress. Yeah. Right. Uh, and in that scenario, you always have to think, okay, look, they're already dead. It can't get any worse, as it were. So be methodical. When you run uh, what we call an arrest call, it's all about being methodical. Yeah. You want to take out the emotion and you want to go through the steps. And it's all about constant reevaluation. Because we have to, remember, we have to resuscitate, which is trying to get you back. But at the same time, we're trying to work out what's caused it as well. Yeah. Real time. Yeah. So, you know, it's, is it this? Is it this? Is it this? Right. Do this test. Do this test. And it's super, super quick. Uh, and all in the space of either you'll get them back or they'll pass away. So um, respect, man. That is a uh, that still is the stressful. doctor chronicle this week. There you go. That's a weekly chronicle. Weekly chronicle. Ooh, I like it. It's a lot of pressure, isn't it? Um, yeah, I don't think there'll pressure. be action packed as that, guys. Every week, no, it won't. but stuff I see in hospitals, um, I will share with you, and I'll give you a few little, you know, nuggets, no pointers, and tips, man. pointers, things are you important. can do, like little yeah, tips and pointers, yeah, yeah, like why we do CPR, or things to be aware of. Important. Or symptoms or whatever. Like, yeah. Stuff like that's helpful. That's so we'll one. do that next week. Absolutely. End of that segment.